so welcome back to another episode of uh, pro view uh, welcome uh, amit wish you a very happy new year once again thank you mon sir today i have a very spe- special guest with me mm-hmm. uh, more than a decade back in bandipur uh, golgar i saw a young dashing gentleman sitting with his camera giving me a look once in a way <laughs> and uh, yes, i mean somehow it uh, looked as if rajinikanth is looking at me <laughs> and from then on this photographer has come a long way congratulations uh, mr chandrashekar kalyana sundaram welcome on board welcome sir thank you thank you mohan sir uh, nice of you to remember that bandipur episode i think i think i have clarified many a times you know i was all alone and uh, i think those were the days of my corporate world so i would have definitely been thinking on my sales targets and not <laughs> not to give a rajini look to you <laughs> <laughs> in fact uh, chandra but you have come a long way since then uh, chandra you have i have been following you from those days your uh, images and uh, your presentations i've been watching they're all just amazing i saw him and first time pleasure to have you on this show chan same here same here same here. i met uh, chandrashekar sir in corbett for the first time and believe me i mean you should see his reflexes in the jeep the moment he sees something <laughs> okay so uh, chandrashekar sir i'm in uh, two decades in corporate world okay um and then a wide life now you have your own uh, enterprise uh, it's called uh, travel unbounded so i um, mean working with uh, it firm and then an entrepreneur i mean how that journey i mean how the transformation happened i would say it started uh, on a very young age because uh, i was born in chennai but i went to live with my grandparents in ooty after the uh, first birthday of mine and i lived in ooty with my grandparents till about 5 6 years right and ooty those years i'm talking way back in you know early 70s was uh, definitely more of a jungle than what it is now and we used to live in a small hillock in a very nice uh, cottage of course now a bungalow but <laughs> then a cottage and i used to run around chasing butterflies playing with the rabbits playing with the deers and, and i was always close to nature and i was made uh, you know i used to uh, listen to my grandfather reading about kenneth anderson and jim corbett in the night when we used to go to sleep right so nature was actually a part of me and uh, i used, i became very close to nature fortunately unfortunately my mother's love uh, you know took me back to chennai uh, that is when i did my education in chennai and then uh, i joined a company called eureka forts mm-hmm. you know the very next day i finished my college i was in eureka forts so that started my corporate career and once you start into your corporate career you get start getting salaries you buying you know start buying cars you you know there's a lot of things you do with your money dresses and stuff like that you know so you get entangled and um, i think about 1996 when telecom was launched in india uh, we all jumped into the bandwagon in fact i was among the first people in telecom i mean we launched telecom in this india as a sales rep and after that uh, i never looked back i just went on uh, climbing the ladder from a sales rep i think i quit as a sales director uh, my last assignment was with systema sham as a sales director i spent considerable time in telecom and telecom was a very intrinsic uh, industry you know high pressure though it used to pay us very well they gave us everything in life in terms of comfort in terms of travel everything they gave but it was used to be very very high pressure so to get a break out of this pressure i started travel so travel became a sort of a compulsion for me so i got back to the jungles i mean where i found a little bit of solace and you know peace in life so that's how i started getting back to the bandipur the brls and the kabinis of the world then of course i bumped into you know gentlemen like mr mohan thomas and vijayan and you know the rajini looks he says and uh, yeah then i started picking up the camera i mean um, pravin is a good friend of mine so saron and pravin we all used to go together you know we i started with a nikon but then shifted to a canon so this went on for a ball most from for 3 4 years i was um, very frequently on travel every weekend i used to be in some other jungle and every time i used to have a conference in say jaipur or delhi or 
even um, you know dubai i used to take a trip to mara or delhi i used to go for a trip to kabet i used to go to rantambur when i had a conference in jaipur but i think finally the call came in to me in 2014 and uh, thanks to my family they supported me a lot when i told them that i want to quit my job and start something on my own um, <clears throat> of course to share my knowledge was uh, i think the primary factor of me to start this company uh, called beyond roads it was called beyond roads mm-hmm. now it's become travel unbounded because of the dot com we didn't get the dot com so then we had to change it to travel unbounded over the years so primarily i wanted to share uh, my experiences to the world and i wanted uh, to take my uh, customers to also to you know especially from the corporate world to come and enjoy nature learn nature i've learned a lot from nature i mean i feel nature is the best teacher of mine and uh, so that made me shift when you talk about the shift the shift wasn't that easy in terms of money yes uh, it was definitely not there uh, there was a, a lot of compromises had to be done a lot of curtailing had to be done which i was ready my family was ready by the time we had sort of settled down uh, so there was no much of pressure on paying the emis and stuff like that so the transition was i would not say it was very easy but at the same time it was not very difficult also and slowly we started picking up and uh, thanks to mr m n jay kumar i think he is still like my godfather in life and uh, you know i went to mr m n jay kumar as a retired uh, assistant principal conservator of forest so i went to him and i told him uh, you know this is what i'm trying to start why don't you please come along as a mentor to one of my trips to start with so that started the journey and uh, from there it was no no stop i mean i had mr m n jay i had mr kalyan verma i had mr mohan thomas sir you know coming as a mentor then dinesh kumble to a large extent i mean he's like my family and i've learned a lot of uh, you know life from him i would say not just photography but life from him and he started coming so this gave me the confidence that yeah when you take an experience with you and share that experience to your guest the word of mouth spreads right so that's how the uh, uh, limited group travels happen and uh, two years back we started doing large corporate events so we took this large corporate of 100 200 people to say rantambur or bandogar and did conferences which was a new thing in the world at that point of time I mean, even now it's a little nascent uh, we have done a lot of conferences even in mara for that example i mean uh, we work very closely with large corporates so that again became a big hit you know people used to go to the bangkoks and the goas of the world to do conferences but we shifted their focus to a jungle you know mix the safaris give something very traditional so that became a hit of course we have a retail wing also which sells smaller family holidays so so yeah that's that's about our company i mean no no promotions <laughs> perfect uh in fact guys uh thank you so much for all your support uh every week we are getting uh, some amazing photographers here only one yeah, request to the that. entire family here is all the subscribers please uh, you watch this video if you like them please do subscribe please do share with your friends and uh, once again uh, chandrashekar sir I wanted to see those beautiful uh, work images, but I'm I, I know I know I wanted to know a lot of stories behind it, you know, because uh, see w- that's why we always discuss with Mohan sir, watching image on Facebook and just hitting that like or comment button this, this is okay, I mean you know, but when you come to know about the story behind those images, uh, it it, it changes your entire perspective about looking at things. So uh, again, it's a big learning day for uh, all of us guys. So. all yours uh, chandrashekar sir you can share your screen and share your work thank you i mean i'd like to thank both of you for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences thank you i'll just share my screen now sure sir so actually i wanted to share uh, some of my uh, great experiences in the wild though i'm calling it wild encounters i mean they, they are more towards being great encounters than being wild because it's in the wild i just named it like this but yeah like as we go through you'll understand why i did call them wild also <clears throat> uh, so this uh, picture has been shot from a country site called likipia this is north kenya actually likipia is uh, the terrain is completely different from mara i mean it's it's very hilly it's very bushy mm-hmm. so the elephants here are not very friendly also so i had this uh, driver called peter you know what happens in mara or even um, you know i would say africa eight out of 10 divers will be called peter so when you come for the breakfast and say peter you will have eight faces turning to you so you know but luckily my peter was a little tall and uh, we could recognize him easier so he takes me to this uh, 
place where there is a beautiful hill and there is a river flowing on the left hand side mm-hmm. so i have this uh, sub adult uh, tusker who is drinking water if you see his feet is actually on uh, you know under water so he was drinking water i told my driver quickly saying that uh, i need to get down and take a shot because the river was beautiful to see so he said okay i'll park my car here brother i mean they call me brother i don't know why <laughs> so we just got down i quickly ran to the uh, river side between me and the jeep was almost on 20 feet to cover and to the river was another 10 feet to cover so as i'm running towards the river i don't know why this elephant i think it has full it started walking up so i was stuck between the you know devil and the deep blue sea now so i got a jeep on the 20 feet away and this guy is walking towards me and i'm on open ground and luckily there was a little tall grass and a bush where i completely lay down flat on my stomach and uh, i was carrying my 5d mark 3 those years with a 2470 mm-hmm. 5d mark 3 is a little less noisy when compared to a 1dx or a d5 of nikon the shutter doesn't make that much of noise so he was walking and luckily the wind was blowing you know uh, towards me so i could smell him but he couldn't smell me and i know the elephants are blind i mean they can't see through that much but unfortunately when the wind direction turned he turned back Oh. and i didn't know what to do but i thought okay let me click one picture and some of the picture will reach my wife <laughs> you know you're going to get crushed so i clicked and it was just a couple of frames i clicked because 5d mark 3 doesn't have such a fast shutter i clicked and he was searching for me he he knew that i was somewhere there but he didn't know where was i and uh, i think fortunately for me peter realized this he jumped down from the car and he started you know waving his cap like that so the elephant thought that smell was coming from peter not me so he quietly walked away and it was a great experience and uh, in fact i went to peter and asked him peter why did you ask me to why did you park the car so far and uh, he had a funny reply he says uh, in case the elephant came charging i can run away he said i <laughs> <laughs> you know i have you know i have to run not you <laughs> you know So it was it was a great experience i think uh, yeah I mean, that is one of them <laughs> elephants i've been pretty lucky with elephants i mean they have not stamped me so far so i wouldn't advise this for any upcoming youngsters or any of the guests who are going for the first time and uh, you know we've all learned through life we've gone through about two decades of travel you know trying to understand the wild animals so this is in mara uh, mara typically has got open grasslands and uh, you know it's the animals get used to the vehicles in fact they see the vehicles from a far distance so they are little composed but i in this picture if you see the cloud formation is very interesting and i wanted to shoot a monochrome and mm-hmm. i was shooting a sony 6400 with a 24105 6400 is a crop body but it's a very small body compared to the full frames and uh, stuff like that it is little light but lessons learned from like pi i never got down from the vehicle i just opened the door and sat just just close to the vehicle because you know i don't want to believe any peter in life anymore and this time it was joseph who was driving me and i asked him very clearly joseph you know how about this she is a matriarch i said how about this matriarch is she okay can i go a little closer he said no issues brother she never charge i mean this was what he said so i sneak up closely you know on my haunches go two steps forward trying to do uh, i wanted the look out if you can see the background there's a hillock if yeah. you see i mean that's a very famous part of mara it's called the look out yes it's a beautiful place you know it, it's like the horizon touching the sea yeah so i wanted that background so i went down my haunches and uh, when i clicked she suddenly turned and you know swung up the tail and i i luckily i was not far away like what was it, you know like here so i just jumped inside and i could hear this guy giggling he was actually giggling i asked him joseph what is there to laugh i mean you would have got me killed he said sorry brother this is not the one <laughs> yeah, one, one more lesson learned but i thought i got my picture and in fact this picture we have given it to an architect in uk i mean they put it on a resto bar i mean it's come out very well and uh, i was happy that you know at least that picture got framed somewhere Uh, Chandrasekhar sir when you go for this kind of shots where you wanted to capture uh, not only the animal but the surroundings also 
Uh, what is that uh, F number normally you play with? Because I think wide angle lenses, twenty four seventy. What what's your favorite or sixteen? Yeah, twenty four seventy or twenty four one zero five is what I shoot with. Uh, okay. In fact, when we go with our guest, as a policy, we have decided not to carry long lenses. So mm-hmm. uh, we leave behind our five hundred and six hundred. Usually, we leave behind. So we carry only a twenty four one zero five to a maximum focal length. Yeah. What is your favorite F number for this? F yeah, number I shoot generally about F eight, F eleven. I mean, sweet spots on the lens. Depends on what lens and shooting. I mean, I think this was a part of F11 or something. Okay, thank you. A 24105, yeah, F11 sounds good. I mean, gives you a good depth field. Again, uh, this was in a country called Louis Saba. Louis Saba is place in uh, North Kenya, and uh, that is where the last p- wild painted dogs are still existing. You know, there are only some 18, 20 dogs. uh the uh, leader of the dogs has been collared because they tracking that um so and they they not i would not say they are uh, friendly but they're not very aggressive mm-hmm. i mean but as dogs they're very inquisitive you know so i got down and this time i was like lying flat on my belly and i knew that they will not attack because it was open ground not like uh, like up here so this is the guy who came pretty close to me and i was uh, actually shooting with a 200 400 of rohit uh, rohit varma initially when i got down i changed it to a 2470 in fact this guy i could smell him it was so bad believe me <laughs> i don't know the same thing he would have felt about me <laughs> but, <laughs> but i just couldn't stand the stink and he would never stop i mean he just kept on coming 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 Finally, licked my cap and went. Oh. You know, I mean, I, I think I've got blessed by the dog. So. <laughs> He would have smelled some old monk, I think. Those years, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I've been a whiskey guy those years, so I don't think so. <laughs> But again, this this lens here is again a twenty four seventy. Wow, I I couldn't believe that. But, the... but uh, this particular lens was a two point eight, <laughs> so. you know i was a little excited when he kept on coming closer I and mean, you know you you learn through your life right i mean i didn't know whether to change my f number i think i started at 2.8 i don't know 5.6 must be because the entire portion beyond his face is blur yeah those years were the excited years i mean i used to travel alone and uh, whatever comes jump down and take types because <laughs> <laughs> i have not done anything in india because i don't want to be painted on facebook <laughs> <laughs> it's not allowed i mean yeah. these are conservancies where you can get down and shoot i mean it's not that we get down on national parks and mm-hmm. unless otherwise take permissions we don't do it so that is also there right. like, people should not think that you know they can generally jump down in the jungle and start shooting it's, it's right. very risky it's pretty risky yeah. so oh, yeah. this is again in mara uh, uh, i'm i'm pretty comfortable with the cheetahs i mean uh, i think they are more like the dogs you know they of course they purr like the cat but they more comfortable like the dogs is what i feel and uh, these guys can be uh, uh, i would say you can go a little closer to them but it's it's not good i mean it's not fair for a human being to encourage them to jump on a jeep or something but unfortunately that is what is happening now uh, we don't allow you know the animals to get on our jeeps definitely no i mean we move away because we don't want to take selfies and post it on facebook and uh, not to drop names but i'm not comfortable doing it but this particular animal was actually on the hunt you know he was trying to hunt and we were trying to track him down for almost hour and a half or so so this is a nice mound and again the sky was a little interesting like uh, mara always has got very nice skies and i felt you know the yellow against the blue background with a little bit of white and green and it would look nice on a wall so he was actually sitting on the mound and he was turning the other side he was turning the other side he was back was towards me and uh, uh, i could have composed a picture but somehow i was not you know not very happy so i told my driver just park the car he has got used to the car because almost from hour and a half we've been chasing him and uh, luckily for us there was uh, you know some antelopes which are that cropped up from the river from the you know right shoulder behind my right shoulder so he had to quickly turn around and give this pose for me uh again belly down little outside the car little outside the car and uh, 24105 the good thing about uh, i'm not trying to promote sony cameras but i think the z7s and the r7s uh, the new mirrorless of canon and nikon should have this uh, 
feature because i have not put my hands on that we have a sort of a tilt screen you know mm-hmm. so you don't have to really go down and look through it i mean you can lie down on your belly and just tilt the screen and see yeah. what's there and you can put a finger focus on that so Even it's a d850 has that nikon is there oh, no, yeah yeah d500 and d850 fantastic feature for uh, you know people who want to try this uh, wedding also sometime portrait yes. you know you just tilt it and just click it and very handy feature very handy feature. very very handy feature yeah and i was happy that uh, i got this frame and uh, <laughs> this is again of, of course in the monochrome version of this went again to the rest of bar in uh, uk wow so they really like this picture i mean it shows the cheetah is really big and you know in its habitat although it's a very small puny looking animal actually if you ask me I mean, compared to a tiger or a lion or even a leopard a cheetah is a very very funny looking animal but you know we made it look big things look big you know? so so I, that's why i've written getting low so mm. you know you got to get low yeah one of my favorite images uh, not short of the very uh, short lens it was with the 100 400 i don't take chances with the sub adult lion if it was a grown up lion a good male lion i don't mind taking a chance but with the sub adult lion no way no way because uh, they are highly temperamental and uh, they are always on the alert you know they, because they always been chased by the you know either their fathers or uncles and right they always on the alert but they always on the mating mood also so they keep running around the females and you know toying around so one evening um, you know uh, the sun was just about to set just about to set and light in mara is one of the best things i have experienced i mean the light is actually golden you need to cut down your white balance i mean you can't shoot at 5 6 also even at 5 6 you get that tinge of orange right so i was shooting at 100 400 um we cut open the door of the land cruiser we just cut open the door of the land cruiser and we have that sort of a platform ejecting out so that we can move our self a little smooth outside mm-hmm. of course our trunk will be outside the car and uh, you run a chance i mean you run a chance but you have to take the chance sometimes and uh, and, and whatever i have done or whatever i have told you so far is it will be either after my guest have gone or before my guest have arrived mm-hmm. so no circus along with my guest you know mm-hmm. i'll make it very clear mm-hmm. because i i can't take a chance i mean True. no one can take a chance for it so the interesting part about this was uh, this guy was actually wanting to you know mate a female who was uh, the leading lady of a a pride and the pride was actually uh, you know captured by two bigger males so that evening i don't know where males disappeared so this guy was in town so i really wanted to get a close shot of him uh, and the way he looked at me and you know i'm trying to focus i'm trying to get the key focus down and you know trying to do all the settings with f number which is not that easy when you're lying down so the guy is kept on staring me you know for almost about a minute or so and when you see through your viewfinder it's li- very exciting to see this guy straight on to you and believe me uh, mon sir he did not even wink his eye through the minute not even one time he just closed and i was actually sweating I even mean, when you're seeing him through the lens is very close you know you feel that he is like you can touch him it was scary it was scary the way he was staring at me was scary because i'm sure he didn't want me around when he was trying to you know put off the queen there but uh, it was very scary moment for me uh, this particular sub adult but somehow i think i managed to get a good light i mean I, of course i'll take the comments from mon sir on this uh, i managed to get a good light and uh, with a little bit of foreground blur which uh, i like i mean there are some theories in photography which says that foreground should not be blur only the background should be blur mm. i mean i respect those theories no doubt about it i mean i also learned that way but uh, for me the foreground little blur and background little blur with the subject popping up will give you a better effect than um, just the background being blur mm. I, i don't know sir correct me if i'm wrong you know if you if you please should uh, comment on this that is my way of seeing things uh, mon sir yeah i you should comment before nowadays uh, we see uh, photographers who are uh, showcasing us image except the subject everything is blur hmm. <laughs> 
even in line with the subject even that part is uh, flur so let me i think they, not comment maybe they call it slow shutter or something i don't know <laughs> but i guess yeah i mean the, the image should be aesthetically pleasing whether it is a foreground blur or not i mean the, the light uh, the stare uh, the stance of animal and that angle uh, that actually for me i mean makes makes it this thing whether it is blur and in fact we shoot with long big focal lens so you can't avoid uh, that also i mean your foreground getting blur but it's a beautiful image and the light is uh, to die for and, uh, and more so i think the behavior of the animal is uh, very evident when you get a little closer to the animal mm-hmm. you know uh, of course i have also been an addict to 500 and 600 grams in life uh, which i am slowly dropping down uh, in fact i am trying for 90 mm and you know 70 200 a lot nowadays mm-hmm. of course i love the scapes and uh, fortunately for us some of my images which are tight and you know low angle are selling also mm-hmm. so on a business perspective also i'm i'm trying to uh, trying to evolve and learn certain things more that's about it yeah. but i feel uh, the more closer you get to a subject uh, you capture more of the behavior mm-hmm. you know even if it is a small turn or a snarl or you know that that actually shows up a lot when you come back and put it on a wall true it's not just for social media but i'm telling you i'm trying to tell pictures on the wall makes a lot of difference when you show a little bit of behavior mohan sir your comment i you should uh, correct me if i'm wrong again <laughs> you are the master no, no. <laughs> <laughs> see you see you bye <laughs> no, no, I, that's that's what i i i that's how i see it i may be wrong i may be right i don't see, know everybody has their own perspective right. regarding photography yeah, absolutely yeah Uh, yeah i call this the lady looks this was in uh, you know a place called sand river sand river actually is a river which is the border of tanzania and masaimara okay uh, along the sand river there is a family of lions which live um, they keep crossing mara and tanzania but i think they are by far the most aggressive pride in the entire terrain mm-hmm. you know, both tanzania and mara because they are not used to the vehicles getting so close it's first of all difficult to get down the sand river and then go on the other side which there is a small ridge there then you get to tanzania you can't go there so from mara it is difficult to go there and similarly from tanzania it is difficult to go there so these lions are very very aggressive very very aggressive and uh, you know you could see the look from uh, this lady's face i mean she is definitely not happy about any people around them mm-hmm. and they actually attack they actually attack uh, jeeps i didn't know this i didn't know this I mean, if i know this i would not have gone there but uh, luckily i didn't get down on this uh, shot uh, we were a little low and uh, it was just a window open on the land cruiser that time we used a closed land cruiser we generally go on a open land cruiser but this time it was a closed land cruiser and uh, i used my 7200 2.8 uh, but again the looks the look is what uh, captivated me to you know press the trigger I mean, the stare which I will never forget in my life. Yeah, it's a very captivating uh, look she has. It it will go on for a long time in my life. I mean, the more I start looking at her, I'll keep thinking on the same day evening. When, of course, the process is a little bit of uh, analog uh, FX Pro to give you that you know sort of a old film look. Mm. So I process it in such a way. Um, I try. I'm 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 not a great guy in processing, but you know sometimes. Put a frame. I do this color FX Pro and analog FX Pro. And That is my Nick, right? Put APR, little bit of filter, black and white. That is my Nick, right? Yeah, it's my. Yeah, I think by far Nick is the best in terms of uh, plugins. Uh, yeah. Into monochromes, yeah. Yeah, plugins. I think they are the best. Yeah. Love the light on the subject. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is one animal which. i i will never step out of my vehicle <laughs> i will never do that in my life uh, i have never done that also uh, we always try to park the vehicle a little lower mm. or again the door open and then the slide out i mean i will never get down for a leopard in this occasion obviously it's not a great photograph i would have had the leopard head a little up and the back going a little lower which would have given me a even more a you know magnified presence but this guy was walking very very fast to the bush he was walking very fast to the bush uh, 
and uh, I, I was actually shooting at about f11 f16 type and uh, luckily for me there was a little bee which came inside so i call this a bee eater you know <laughs> so i said it's a little cynical but uh, but luckily for me i think the bee also was in focus so that added a little bit of flair to the image but uh, i would rather say um, you know i've taken the advice of dinesh or mohan or you know vijayan for that matter any animal which is walking you know directly on to you it's ideal to have the head up the shoulder little down all four legs and the tail covered i mean that's that's the proper uh, head on facebook shot or something like that. so so yeah but but why i showed this picture is uh, if i would have gone a little on top and shot from a window they were jeeps behind mm mm-hmm. you know my next picture also i'll show you you can actually see them uh, you know you can avoid to cut the jeeps see uh, these are occasions in wildlife where you don't have control over your surroundings right mm. i mean and you can't say another jeep behind you to just go away because he's also paid the same kind of money as what we have paid so we'll have to try to adjust you know and ensure that we get a decent shot without getting into a trouble or without troubling anyone i mean that, that's more towards this shot i mean i i put this picture to my guest and i always tell them you know there are better ways to get pictures not that you always stand and shoot and then complain the beaches i mean the jeep is behind mm-hmm. i just want to add one uh, just comment on what uh, chandru said i've been told by a couple of guides there in mara you you take a chance with the lion you take a chance with the elephant but not with the leopard because they are very very unpredictable you don't know what they are going to do mm. so anybody watching this please uh, yeah, do that with the leopard yeah they they don't look actually very ferocious they look very docile but they are extremely swift and they are like they extremely agile i mean it's very very difficult when when one gets into the jeep or you get out a leopard attack is always fatal i mean the lions also you people have survived leopards are pretty difficult to survive from that way this again from mara uh, the thing i i liked about this image is you know it's about motherhood you know mm-hmm. people think that motherhood is very caring and you know it's about giving all love and stuff like that but actually motherhood is painful you know my my mother would say because i am a son <laughs> but uh, you know they these little babies tend to bite hmm. and they're very sharp razor sharp teeth hmm. and uh, uh, to get this angle also i had to go a little down on my uh, uh, you know haunches and then take the shot and uh, you know this shot shows in what pain she is actually when she's milking you know and when she's suckling and then the kids are suckling so it's, it's it's a painful thing i mean nature, this also you know sort of a nature which teaches us saying that you know motherhood is not a very easy thing so it's just another example which i learned from nature and i i respect the women out of our life and uh, you know it's, it's not easy to bring up kids amit uh, you must have definitely watched uh, prides in uh, africa yeah in a pride there might be more than uh, one uh, female with uh, cubs sometimes 3 4 have you noticed that the cubs don't uh, go and uh, suckle its own mother sometimes it goes and suckles other other uh, mothers around other females that is one uh, thing which uh, you notice in lion pride yes have you seen that i mean Yeah, yeah 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 did observe that and and then the bonding in the lion pride yes. is altogether different like you know i mean the chemistry the bonding there the behavior i mean one can spend a days together just shooting that uh, pride if you get yeah yeah they're very social they're very very social i mean <coughs> because in fact um, there was an image i mean i can tell about the image what the male is i mean they were a very specific character i've seen a couple of times in the male they allow the babies or the cubs to come and bite their tails or backs hmm. they allow them purposely they allow them and even if however the small the cub is even if the pressure is not felt by the huge lion he growls and shouts as though he is in so much of pain oh so that actually encourages this cub to bite more hmm. you know that's how they learn i mean this was told by a masai driver to me okay. our own guide uh, 
uh, whom we engage he was telling this uh, you know i was wondering i was asking i mean this little fellow he is not even biting why is his male growling so much so he said this is a part of learning session mm. you know that's what the male do they purposely allow them to bite and they shout oh. so you get satisfaction right as a cub oh i should bite more i should bite more and you know that's how they grow it's a very interesting uh, thing i learned from them yeah <laughs> first and last time i use my uh, uh, remote trigger uh, i never use a buggy i mean of course i have a buggy but i don't use my buggy or a remote i don't i mean i am not putting up my collar to say that you know i can go down on the ground and shoot but generally i feel a little more challenged and uh, a little more what do you say uh, i feel little more satisfied when i handled uh, hand hold a camera to shoot an animal rather than putting a remote far and shooting of course remote has got his own uh, advantage like what people take now i mean you can't just get on with a tiger or something like that they'll swipe you away but yeah this this particular occasion you can see the jeep actually i mean i think we got the photographs here i actually my jeep is on the right mm-hmm. corner of the screen and uh, i am handling this uh, pocket wizard mm-hmm. it's mounted on the camera it doesn't have a mold it's just kept on a bean bag so this linus was actually uh, uh, sleeping on that bush behind in the shade so i was testing this equipment and the trigger noise made her come up Oh. so she kept on coming to the camera and i was so happy for the first time i'm getting some great images and i don't know what kind of images i was getting and uh, i don't know whether it's washed out i don't know whether the f number was good but i was still clicking mm. so this lady came snipped at the camera i don't know i mean she she might not have liked the smell again so she passes by mm. very quickly one of her sibling comes and this was happened next Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and my camera is gone he is holding my camera and i'm still clicking he is running through the bushes with my you know holding the remote like this is mm-hmm. holding the remote it's a 5d mark 3 with a 2470 he is running through the bushes one of my uh, friend was there with me he first threw a bean bag mm. there was another lion who came picked up the bean bag and went so there was one more bean bag i had i didn't throw that i had my cap i threw my cap you know we remember this old monkey story mm. whatever you throw they will throw back but it never happened <laughs> the bean bag went the cap went <laughs> 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 so finally my driver stopped the car he said don't throw anything more i will get it for you so he's a masai he jumps down and lions are very scared about this masai guys you know i mean because they keep they've been known as lion hunters so he gets down takes his shawl and shouts something in masai blah 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 the lion gets so scared he drops my camera and runs <laughs> so finally i get my camera and uh, my remote is broken like a biscuit oh i still have it as a memento but that was my last time <laughs> i used my remote obviously two reasons one i thought i was disturbing them mm-hmm. but the more important reason was every remote cost me 15000 bucks mm. so i couldn't spend that money any time in my life i said no more remote if i can go down and shoot i'd shoot i mean otherwise but it was a very very interesting uh, incident which happened for almost uh, 30 40 minutes and your full frame camera is in a lion's mouth you know <laughs> so there was a debate happening in that night in the camp um, there were some nikon users there were some canon users of course i mean you know that, that stupid ego kicks in everyone <laughs> so the nikon person is saying ah you don't know you don't have a fast camera like the d5 or the d4 and my guys are telling no no canon is the best and then, so i finally had to put up this image i said lions use canon so let's go <laughs> <laughs> so so that was a, yeah this is a very very nice incident in my life but uh, another another good encounter <laughs> wow Uh, this is a old guy uh, this was again in the ground i took a chance on him uh, but what i did was actually in this shot uh, a little bit of cropping has been done below because uh, otherwise you would have got the jeep beading i was actually down the jeep mm-hmm. I was down the jeep with my hand uh, extended and i was there the whole time till he passed away he just crossed the jeep i mean he never realized that i was lying down I mean, uh, that, that that was a little risky but yeah but i had to take the chance 
I said, okay, let me take. And he was an old guy. I mean, I think he has seen enough and more tourists to come and kill me. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, he, he would have. He would have thought, let me, uh, let me choose a more beefy guy. <laughs> <laughs> he would have thought, I'm not this old guy. I mean, let me <laughs> say Amit Rane next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, actually. I mean, but yeah, and this this particular thing, why I'm telling, trying to tell us, if you actually keenly notice on the left hand side of, uh, I mean, the right hand side of my screen, mm-hmm. you can see a little glass, and mm-hmm. which I purposely blurred on this image, but that was a jeep. Oh, okay. That was a jeep. I mean, this is what I was trying to tell you. To cut down on the jeep, see, you can always shout at this guy saying that, boss, please move, please move. I want this lion because he's walking head on to me. I've got a blue sky. I've got some great uh, image. But he wouldn't listen, I mean, because he's paid the same kind of money. Mm. So I purposely went down and, you know, framed the shot. So the challenges pay. So that, mm. That's the point which I want to make. Uh, risks pay, but you have to be very, very careful. Not definitely not advisable for the first timers, or even you know the. You'll have to be there with the right guides. You'll have to listen to them. You'll have to know the behavior of the animals before you get to do anything stupid like this. True. Yeah, back home, uh, a little process because of the print they wanted. Uh, mang- mangu, mangu, they call it mangu, right? Mangu, bandhagar. Bandhagar. Uh, we were on an elephant. Uh, Bandhagar is a little funny in terms of there is a tall elephant, there are dwarf elephant, you know. And unfortunately, I've always got on the dwarf elephant because I'm because of my height. I will not be able to jump on the tall elephant. So I'm always on the danger zone. And the tall elephant goes comfortably where this dwarf elephant, you know, sort of dances when he sees this tigers. He gets a little uh, anxious. So this guy was on the meal. I mean, he was uh, sharing the meal already with his cubs and he was uh, not in a great mood. Uh, this shot, uh, I was using a 70-200, I think at about 70 mm, pretty close to me. But the way he growled, uh, uh, believe me, that my hands was actually trembling. You know, it, you, you, you people would have heard the tiger's growl. It actually makes your bloodstream turbulent. I could feel that. I mean, my heart was literally pumping just two shots i said i mean i can't take this time it has, i mean it, it's, the elephant is not even about five six feet tall i mean he could reach you know just by getting up <laughs> and I, it's a it's a little risky thing and i i heard uh, uh, one of uh, you know incident happened somewhere in pench or somewhere when the kid slipped out of the elephant and luckily the other elephant came and covered the kid from the tiger so it's a dangerous stuff which people do, but you know it's tourism, so we can't help it. Maybe more care should be taken. And uh, but what I learned from this uh, thing was the tigers are the most most powerful cats in the entire circuit. I mean, they can beat anything hollow. That's that's my learning from the entire uh, years of experience I've had. I mean, you just can't take a chance with these guys. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, sir. Wrong, sir. No, it's, it's terrifying. They're very, very terrifying. Very sadhu looking guys, but one growl will <laughs> send you up shivers. <laughs> it's a very difficult thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, my, uh, I would say my most favorite picture uh, of the tiger. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in MTS, as I told you, I was a sales director and we used to give this uh, data cards uh, for the forest dwellers. Mm-hmm. They used to keep it on the forest guest house and they used to have, you know, click pictures and come and upload through our data card. We used mm-hmm. to have a data card. So I was trying to check the signal on the data card in BRLs. This is in Karnataka. Uh, we were coming back. It became a little dark because there was huge rain in that evening and uh, BRLs has got a very funny route. You know, it's like a box canyon. It's a one way in and the same way out. So we're actually climbing that uh, uh, sort of a slope uh, with the lights on. Obviously, Jeep lights on because it's dark. And we see this huge guy sitting across the road. For a second, I mean, I had, uh, I think the RO4 was next to me. I had my friend Ram, uh, who was again my colleague before me and his driver. No one, no one uttered a word. No one, believe me, no one uttered a word. The lights were on. 
the engine is on and he was just looking for about a couple of minutes he suddenly started walking towards the jeep down at that point of time i am you know thinking about the mohan man eater of jim carbert the champawar man eater of jim carbert <laughs> open gypsy four people a huge you know grown up male i mean almost grown up male walking towards us in the light and it's dark again going going back to the first photograph i said one photograph to my wife <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> one last photograph nothing else so i put my 7200 it was almost about 20 feet when he made this stretch i'm trying to click the arrow for holds my hand and it says no one talks i said you are the only person talking no <laughs> <laughs> he got so scared and he said no one talks i said sir you are the only person talking no one is talking shit <laughs> like then um, yeah i mean gentleman i mean tiger is a real gentleman very very it, it was hardly about a half a feet or a feet of distance from the road to the hill slide mm-hmm. he just moved and we you know came away i think i think by far the best experience i ever had chandru so, i yes. think i you know this i started my wildlife photography from br hills oh yeah yes 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 and till and that is one of the best place i would like to stay because the stay there is an awesome experience staying in bear hills but believe me i have never seen a tiger there <laughs> and i envy you for this image <laughs> i've tried so many times i have never got a tiger there oh, oh that's unfortunate i think the this is the best tiger image that i have seen that i have seen from bear hills thank you sir thank you thanks a lot that's an encouragement uh, yeah but as i rightly said uh, you know brls uh, uh, i think because of the supreme court demarcation of the tourism zone uh, they cut it down to about 16% generally is about 19 to 20% which the parks are allowed to open up for tourism but brls as a funny park has got only 16% but as rightly the what mons are said i think one of the best places to stay mm-hmm. you know if someone needs to really experience what a jungle is i think brls is the best place because it's there in the core of the jungle and such a beautiful surroundings we have and uh, so many birds you are completely cut off from the city life and you are completely cut off from the resortish type you know you are there in a the jungle it's, a, it's like it's i would say it's better than dikala mm-hmm. correct sir yeah i and you are staying in tents huh? correct mm-hmm. you are staying in tent not a, a, a man made building it's just yeah. A tent. Yeah, the tent on the stilt, and it's yeah. a lovely place. I would recommend everyone to go there and check it out. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I, I sometimes <laughs> not only wild. I showed some domestic uh, animals also. This was in Goa, mm-hmm. and um, uh, Goa in monsoons. I would love to go to Goa in monsoons. I don't like to go to Goa during summers because it's pretty crowded out there. and this doggy was actually digging something. I think some tunnel or something was <laughs> digging, and I actually. you know i was also flat on the ground on the beach i was lying and you know i called him and he turned and i had these two locals there mm-hmm. this this famous thing went out saying that who let the dogs out <laughs> <laughs> you you guys decide <laughs> who let the dogs out actually i mean i i love the eye contact of the animal yeah and there's a beautiful expression on this you can actually see yeah, that that's a nice expression for a mongrel especially mm-hmm. yeah. one question chandru yes sir so when we go for uh, macro session and uh, sometimes for uh, uh, landscape also we wear elbow elbow guards yeah knee knee caps okay do you by any chance have a tummy guard <laughs> <laughs> i tried to not get a tummy for so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but knee cap and uh, elbow knee cap definitely yes mm-hmm. especially in mara because the land cruiser bolts are as big as a crowbar so <laughs> definitely i wear them and uh, yeah on the beach i don't need not a tummy gun obviously maybe i i you know you drink a lot of beer so that you get a bouncy <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, i saw an image uh, way back about 10 years back from i think it was in namibia there was a very interesting photograph when the tribes 
was shot from down below. So this was in Mara. We went for a village visit. After all my guests had finished the shoot, I assembled these uh, <laughs> very tall men, you know, seven feet plus. And I was lying down with a 50 mm block. Uh, it, it, they didn't fit in. So I had to change to my, you know, 24 mil. So finally I said, why don't you guys look at me and give a smile? It was the most scariest moment I ever had in my life. <laughs> because I got a dozen or seven footers and if one had slipped on me, I would have become chutney. <laughs> Completely crushed. But yeah, but I, I love the shot and uh, I had to use a flash. It was a little tricky because I didn't want to burn their faces. Mm -hmm. So I had to put a big uh, you know, filter on that and uh, shoot. And they were happy. They were happy about the outcome and more so I was very happy <laughs> because I could sneak out of them. <laughs> that's why I call them the skyscrapers they're very tall guys very very tall and hefty guys and you know I'm a puny guy so I imagine 12 dozen people massaging on me and they... that brings me to the uh, end of the presentation uh, the lesson what I've learned uh, the most important lesson what I've learned from people like Mohan sir Vijay and Raj and Praveen oh, I mean, a lot of wildlife Dinesh Sudhir we need to really bend down, bend low to achieve bigger things. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's why I was showing a lot of low angle images. But uh, yeah, this this is a primary lesson which I take from nature. One has to be humble. One has to be, you know, uh, practice a lot of humility to achieve bigger things in life. So yeah, that brings me to the end of the presentation. If you have some questions, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chandrasekhar, sir, for um, showing some fantastic work. I think a uh, couple of uh, sessions we had and uh, to my surprise, I think we almost I think 12, 13 sessions with different photographers. Uh, slowly, slowly the primes at 500, 600 is, is, is taking a backseat and, and those 24, 105, 24, 70, 100, 400 to a surprise, the way Rahul uses, Rahul Sajdev uses it. I mean, you can actually watch this episode. Uh, believe me, I mean, the, the composition, it gives a lot of flexibility. Praveen Mohandas, I mean, that's it. Uh, so a uh, lot, a lot of learning. Uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing some, some of this unseen images and, and, and the story behind it. And uh, yes, as you advise, as you rightly advise uh, for a, for a beginner or first time who is going, please don't try this uh, low angles and this thing. Okay. Once you experience, know the animal behavior, then probably you can try this. But uh, once again, thank you so much, sir, for joining and keep us posted about your work, future workshops. So that yeah. people can join you. I'm going to share guys uh, all the links of uh, uh, Chandru sir's uh, Facebook account and his Instagram and his website uh, uh, in, in, in the description down below. So you can go and check it out. And uh, believe me guys, he's a fantastic teacher. Okay. Uh, I was in Corbett and uh, uh, one of my client was, has asked me a question on some settings on metering on, on Canon and we were in some camp. Somehow he overheard, he came and he explained everything without even asking. I mean, this kind of people, okay, you hardly find in wildlife because someone coming and sharing his knowledge, okay, is, is, is something which is lagging. We all, all learn from our own experiences, but then you know, when you have some fantastic, fantastic guides and teachers, this always helps you achieve what you want to achieve. So uh, that's it from my side, Monsa. Uh, thank you so much, Chandru, for this uh, wonderful knowledge shared. Thanks for joining us. It was a great pleasure hosting you. Uh, for all those who are listening, see, we started in a time when there were hardly any anybody coming forward to share their knowledge, share their image. Those days, they won't even show you their image. Those images are for awards. <laughs> you can see them only after it has won an award. <laughs> They won't even show their uh, images to you. Forget even uh, uh, telling you what settings or what how, how to go about. So thank you so much, Chandru, for uh, uh, joining and giving sharing your knowledge. And guys, uh, Chandru is such a fun-loving guy and a wonderful person to travel with. Please try to travel with him. Thank you so much, Chandru. Thanks, Master. God bless you all and all the very best for your future episodes.